Hi class, this is Mr. Hart. Uh, this podcast I want to go over um, what we covered in week three of Stars, Galaxies, and the Universe Unit. Um, and in this week we mostly just focused on stars, okay, what they are. Because if you think about the universe, you know, most of it's stars. Everything we've talked about before this is usually just a grouping of stars. So we want to focus on what a star really is and what they're really made out of and why they have so much energy. So the first question we want to ask is, where do stars get their energies? Because if they were just burning up in the sky, you know, out in space, they would have died out a long time ago if they just used regular processes. But they actually have a special process called nuclear fusion that they can use. Okay. So how nuclear fusion works is because of the extreme gravity or the extreme amount of gravity because of the massiveness of the star, we get this really strong pressure on the inner core of the star. Okay, And when that happens, we get hydrogen atoms that can fuse into helium atoms. Okay, So we start with you know, a hydrogen atom. Okay, Start with two hydrogen atoms. Okay, They come together, and they hit really hard together because of this strong gravity. And what you're left over with is a helium atom, right? They fuse together. Their leftover energy turns into um, light and heat. And that gives them this extra pressure that they need to push out on the star. If stars didn't have this type of fusion, okay, this nuclear process, they'd collapse in on they, themselves. They wouldn't have enough energy to stay alive. Okay, So this nuclear fusion process is really important because it gives the star the light it needs, the heat it needs, and the pressure it needs to stay alive and to light up our night sky. Okay, So that's nuclear fusion. It's the main process in all the stars which allows them to act the way they do. Okay, So then we talked about the different types of stars. Okay, So most stars are made up of hydrogen Okay, and they burn hydrogen but they go into different stages of their life Okay, and they can be seen at different brightnesses and temperatures. So if you look at this picture, it has a temperature scale and a luminosity scale, or brightness. Okay. So as we go further and further to the left, the stars are getting hotter and hotter. As we go further and further up, the stars are getting brighter and brighter. Okay. So you'll notice that most of the stars are on this main sequence line, is what it's called, the main sequence stars. So most stars are in this point, they're in the normal part of their life. Okay. They have a certain brightness for a certain temperature. Okay, their temperature and brightness make sense. Okay, but we have a couple of stars which we call the giants and the supergiants, which are much brighter than they should be because they are fairly cool but very bright. Okay, we'll talk more about these in a second. Okay, but they're much cooler than they should be, but they're very bright. And then we have the white dwarfs, which are very hot but not as bright, fairly dim. And you'll also notice with stars that they um, kind of correlate with their size as well. The bigger the star is, usually the brighter it's going to be. Okay, So this is how we classify stars, temperature and brightness or luminosity. Okay. So then the last thing we talked about was the life cycle of a star, which is probably the most important part of a star, really. It is the description of how it came to be and where it's going. This is probably one of the most important graphs you'll learn in astronomy is the cycle of a star. Okay, so all stars start as a stellar nebula. Okay, this cloud of interstellar uh, gas and dust. Okay, then they'll form into either a large star, or an average star, or a large star, or a massive star. Okay, so this top timelines for an average star. This bottom timelines for a massive star. So the average star will burn as an average star for most of its life. It will fuse hydrogen into helium for you know a couple billion years usually, for most of its life. Then it will turn into a red giant, which means it no longer has any hydrogen to burn. It just has helium left over, and it can't really burn helium very well, so the, inner, or the outer layers start to kind of evaporate off. It turns into this red giant, much larger than it was, not a strong gravitational field, it doesn't have the nuclear fuel that it needs to push out. Okay, and so eventually it's going to kind of rebound and turn into this planetary nebula, or kind of just this leftover material that can't fuse, doesn't have any nuclear fusion or fusion left. Okay, and that leftover dust and material kind of settles, 
and the core becomes what we call white dwarf, which is just a rock that's just very hot that's left over from the star. And the reason it glows is just because of the intense heat. Okay, so average star burns for most of the light. It starts to die off. It kind of explodes off into this gas and dust, and the core is left as a white dwarf. Okay. But if the star is more massive, okay, it will um, still burn as a massive star, hydrogen for most of its life, but only for you know a couple hundred million years as compared to billions of years with an average star. It will burn for a much shorter time period. Then it will dim and start to cool down because it can't burn any more hydrogen. But sometimes massive stars can burn off helium as well and form other elements like carbon. Okay, So we call these the supergiants. They're much larger and they can actually fuse some of the heavier elements. And then when that happens, we have a large explosion, which we call a supernova, which is where a lot of the elements that we know are formed. Okay, It's not just this planetary nebula of d dust and rock, but this is a rather big explosion, which we call a supernova. Okay? then the leftover core of that star can either turn into a neutron star because it's so heavy, the neutrons compact together, they break that electrical force, or if it's even heavier than that, it can form into a black hole. Okay, That mass forms a rip in the space-time fabric, causes a black hole. Okay. So those are our two life cycles. The average star ends up with a white dwarf, kind of a calm existence, Whereas the massive stars have a very violent eruption with the supernova and they can turn into neutron stars and black holes. Okay? They're very much they're much more exciting than the average star. Okay? But you should understand and know how to use this diagram and what it means. Okay? But that's all we covered um, for this week. Then we did some review and watched the documentary. But um, you should know this stuff. This is probably the most important part of uh, this unit is this life cycle and the stars and how they work. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Uh, let me know if you had any questions and thank you for watching.